not even vibranium. Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso and yes today we are talking about the recently released Audemars Piguet Black Panther Flying Turbion. Possibly one of the most controversial releases of 2021 but then again Audemars Piguet is no stranger to controversy. I mean a few years ago we had the 1159, hell even the Royal Oak had a few people scratching their heads when it was first released in 1972. So controversy and pushing their boundaries is kind of a P's MO. But why is it controversial? Well, first off, there are the group of overly simplistic people that like to say it looks like an Invicta. It's not even a valid comparison purely because the quality between these two is so vastly different. The only thing they have in common is the fact they're using Marvel characters as an inspiration. But I think the more valid criticism, or at least the one that I think needs to be addressed, is whether AP should be making this collaboration. Should AP be making something that maybe looks a little bit gimmicky at first? In my view, this collaboration is actually a great idea and I think that the Black Panther Flying Turbion is actually a great Audemars Piguet. It might not be one that aesthetically I like too much, though I'll talk more about that in a second, but I do think this is extremely true to Audemars Piguet as a brand, to their brand ethos, especially in modern times. And that's what I'm going to talk about mostly today, how this is actually a much better AP than you might think. Of course, like with anything in watches, especially talking about established brands, we find the answer in history. Audemars Piguet, especially modern Audemars Piguet, is, let's face it, known for the Royal Oak. Introduced in 1972, it created this segment of steel sports watches that rolls the market today, that spawned countless homages, inspired buys, substitute products, competitors, whatever you want to call them. The list is endless with everyone from Patek Philippe to Bell and Ross getting in on the action. But more importantly, the introduction of that watch was something that at the time people would have said, just like today, this isn't AP. At that time, AP was known for perpetual calendars, for dress watches, for precious metals. They weren't known for making steel. So in that sense, I think already the Black Panther checks the box in that it is something that goes against what people originally thought of the brand. It pushes people to look at the brand in a new way and it opens the brand to new markets and to new audiences. Secondly, bringing it back to the Royal Oak, the Royal Oak was designed by Gerald Genta. Now in the 1980s, Gerald Genta acquired the rights from Disney to create the Mickey Mouse watch. And this was because he wanted to pay homage to the icons that had inspired him and that had defined his childhood. And I think, again, that's kind of what AP is doing. The new generation of AP buyers, people who, like me, are in their 30s, people going into their 40s, 50s, who are maybe looking to get into the brand. For us, our icons, our childhood heroes and themes were the characters of Marvel Comics. Depending on how old you are, that could be from the movies and the MCU. I saw Iron Man when I was in high school. It might have been from the comic books themselves. But either way, this is, again, an homage and appeal to the childhood defining heroes of the modern generation of AP buyer. And I think that's extremely important because you can see the historical parallel. And so both of those counts pushing the envelope further into something that wasn't expected of the brand and their relationship with Gerald Genta, this makes perfect sense for AP as a brand. And that's before you even look at the watch itself. Now, as I said before, aesthetically, there are a few things that I'm not the biggest fan of. In my view, I would have preferred that they focus more on subtle details instead of overtly having a Black Panther statuette right there on the dial, maybe having that on the back, maybe having that just a smaller one on the Turbion. But more than anything, if you look at this, this is still very AP and the fact that it's made to amazing quality. Of course, it's proper high horology having a Turbion 72 hour power reserve in-house movement, of course. It checks all of those boxes, but the attention to detail is amazing. The texturing that's on both the front and the back in terms of creating this sort of geometric pattern on the dial and on the case back. Those vents on the lugs of the titanium case evoke the aircrafts that were used in the movie. But even then, it's the craftsmanship. That figurine that everyone calls gimmicky, it's made of 18 karat white gold. First, it's shaped with a laser, and then it's hand-painted and hand-engraved to achieve the shading and additional detailing that makes it so incredibly realistic. In the same way that a comic book artist would be using shading to create more depth and more reality, 
This is done on a micro level with engraving to make even more depth and even more realism on this tiny little figurine. And even the choice of materials, ceramic and titanium. Yeah, it's not vibranium and let's face it, Panerai invents a new material every 10 minutes, so AP could have easily done the same and just called it vibranium since they have the license from Marvel, but at least they still chose materials that evoke that notion of vibranium, which is that it's very light and that's very strong. Same thing with ceramic. At the end of the day though, they still embraced the concept and they embraced it even further when you look at the one-off white gold variant that sold for $5.2 million at auction with all the proceeds going to charity. That one actually used engravings of the Wakandan pattern on the clothing that you see throughout the movie and the comics that was engraved across the entire case and bezel. In my view, I would have liked for the standard 250 piece limited edition version that sells for around 160,000 US, I think that one should have had the pattern on it because it would have been them embracing the concept even further. And I think that's the only real shortfall of this watch is that they didn't go all out on the standard one and only so many people know about this one of one piece that was auctioned off. You know, if you weren't watching the original launch, if you weren't watching that charity auction they did, you probably wouldn't have seen it. It's not something that gets very reported on. So really, if you think about it, this is actually a very on-brand move for AP and one that I think will work out well for them. Being only 250 pieces, I highly doubt it will be difficult for them to find 250 people with the means, the love for AP and the love for Marvel Comics or the love specifically even for Black Panther, considering it's one of the most popular movies released by the MCU, it's not likely they're gonna have trouble selling this. And I can't wait to see what they do in the future with this. I think it opens so many doors. And one thing I like about AP in what we've seen with the white gold version and what we saw with the Terminator 3 Offshore, again, not watches that are for everyone, but because they were limited, they could still sell them and you can't knock them for how all out they go in the concept of embracing these collaborations. So I'd love to see what they do with, for example, a War Machine Offshore. Don Cheadle was actually featured in one of the original announcements that they were gonna have this collaboration. So I was actually really looking forward to a War Machine themed Royal Oak Offshore. Also, I think that the 1159 provides a great platform for some other characters like Doctor Strange or even Iron Man. I think the whole red and gold thing, it can go really wrong and really gimmicky, but I think the use of two-tone that they've done in the past with the 1159 could be a nice way for them to maybe include that red in the case band while still having the rest of the case in something like yellow gold so they can still have that yellow gold color scheme without it looking too over the top. I think there's so much potential in this collection. I really can't wait to see what they bring out. If you want to see some renderings of what I think they can do with future Marvel themed watches, make sure you check out my Instagram at Shaluso. I'll be posting some of those starting with what I think this Black Panther flying tourbillon could have been had they integrated a little bit more of that white gold version into the standard titanium and ceramic version. I really can't wait to see what they bring out from it and I hope it goes well for them as well because I always admire AP for of the big three, the Holy Trinity, whatever you want to call it, they're always the ones who are willing to experiment and try new things. What's the next big development? What's the next technological development, material development, design development? This is how we get new classics like the Royal Oak in the 70s. It was because it was something that had never been done before. So I really, really admire AP for trying to push the envelope to find their next classic, and I hope that they find it within this new collaboration. But in any case, let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Black Panther Flying Turbion? Does it make more sense to you now after knowing the history, or do you still think this is kind of off-brand for AP? What do you think of it in general, and what are you looking forward to in future collaborations with Marvel? Let me know in the comments below what Marvel-themed APs you want to see in the future, and I'll try and make renderings of those as well. And in any case, if you like this video, make sure you like it and share it. If you want to see more pictures of watches and infographics and new renderings, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And of course, if you want to see more videos of watches, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so you know when the next video comes out. In any case, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.